Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two of the week of September 3rd. Let's get going. We're going to be doing looking at mysteries and fantasy. Yay! Woot! My favorite. Um, and going over some future dates as far as things that are coming up as far as due dates. And hopefully you are finishing up with um, your major assignment that's due tonight. And hopefully you're doing some reading in our textbook because you have a response to that this week. However, that's just a three paragraph response to anything you have read in the first six chapters. So please don't stress yourself. All right, so let's look at mysteries. All right, mysteries and crime fiction are second in popularity on the teen reading habits survey at 43%. You might look at the book list top YA crime fiction for youth page. That's a great resource if you're starting from scratch or don't know what to buy or don't know where the holes are in whatever collection you inherit when you have your own library. Also, you might want to be looking at the Edgar Award for the Best Mysteries, which now includes a young adult category that was established in 1989. The website is currently under revision, but you could find the Best Edgar Young Adult Award for 2017 and the Edgar Award database at these um, links when I get this up on our on our website on Blackboard. So um, keep this in mind. If you're looking to update your collection or fill in holes, these are great resources for collection development or looking for a new read. Frequently in Young Adult Mysteries, the detective is an amateur sleuth kind of like Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys from when I was growing up. Maybe some of you guys read them. I think they had some sort of resurgence in the um, 80s or 90s. Uh, another great YA mystery series is the Chasing Vermeer, The Right Three, and The Calder Game by Blue Baliet or Balit. I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation. I looked it up ahead of time, but um, the French pronunciation would be Baliet. Okay, so YA mysteries need a hook. All mysteries need a hook, but why in, YA in particular, because teenagers tend to be a little bit more flighty and distracted, particularly by their telephones. So, in The Christmas Killer by Patricia Windsor, Nancy Emerson disappeared the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. All right, isn't that a great hook? It makes you want to go, why? Why'd she disappear? What happened? Uh, in Facing the Dark by Michael Harrison, Dad was arrested for murder on Tuesday. Who killed Mr. Chippendale by Mel Glenn? He does not see, hear, or feel the bullet that explodes his brain like a starburst rocket. So these are obviously three different uh, book beginnings, but again, it's that hook, that mystery hook that gets kids to like bite into these books. Some popular mystery series, the Alex Ryder series by Alex Hor Horowitz. Those are super popular in my high school library. Janie Johnson series by Caroline Cooney. Those have not been popular at my library, but they're still good. The Sammy Keys series by Wendelin Van Dronen. I also have not seen these move at my library and I don't think I have the complete series. Some of that is my fault. Sherlock Holmes and the Baker Street Irregulars series by Tracy Mack and Michael Citrin. I don't have this series at all in my library, and I've just been learning about it and think I'm going to add it. And the Maximum Ride series by James Patterson. Oh my gosh, this is so popular in my high school. They, these are flying off the shelves all the time, so they're on the shelf right now, but we have only been checking out books for a couple days. They will start going shortly. So there are adult mystery writers writing YA mysteries, including Carl Hyacin, who wrote Scat. I think he's got something coming out soon called Squirm, which is about snakes and lizards, I believe. That's coming out very shortly. Um, so he's written multiple mysteries or uh, other books for young adults. I think Hoot is another one of his. That's um, probably around 2000, I think. Anyway, Harlan Coben has three book series featuring the characters Myron Bolitar and Wynne Lockwood. And of course, John Grisham, Theodore Boone, Kid Lawyer, 
I have not read any of John Grisham's YA stuff, in, in all honesty, but I've read a lot of his adult things. I bet it's enjoyable. He does a very good uh, cliffhanger suspense type of writing, so I bet he writes well for young adults and adults. Other popular YA mysteries include Paper Towns by John Green. That's from 2008. It's still awesome. Of course, that was made into a movie. I did not see the movie. Um, I loved the book, though, and that was an Edgar Award winner. If the Witness Lied by Caroline, Caroline Cooney. She is prolific. There's so much good stuff by her. Reality Check by Peter Abraham from 2010. That was also an Edgar Award winner. Just a, a quick definition for you, the difference between a mystery and a thriller. Mystery, the reader is waiting for something to be revealed. The event has occurred and the protagonist must discover who is responsible or what has happened. A thriller, however, the reader is waiting for something significant to happen and the protagonist's job is to prevent something from happening, particularly something bad. Some young adult psychological thrillers can include terror, suspense, sociopaths, and psychopaths. An early, early one of these is Wolf Rider, A Tale of Terror by Avi from 1986. On an ordinary evening, just as he's about to leave for a party, 15-year-old Andy receives a phone call from a stranger that changes his life. I just killed someone. I killed Nina. I stabbed her. That's a great kind of hook and a great um, way to start a book talk if you wanted to book talk that book, and then you can just leave that hanging. It's super quick, super short, and it would still engage a lot of young adults, a lot of your audience, into wanting to read that. YA authors famous for their psychological thrillers, Robert Cormier with The Rag and Bone Shop, Lois Duncan, of course, with Killing Mr. Griffin, which was also made into a movie. Joan Lowry Nixon writes a ton of young adult thrillers. The Name of the Game was Murder and many others. Nancy Whirlin, The Killer's Cousin. I'd like to add um, Carol Plum Ucci does a lot of thrillers um, or mystery mysteries, and I think she's great too. And moving on to my favorite science fiction fantasy titles. Choose from one of the following titles or choose something else. I, I don't want to really limit you. And if you've had something sitting on your nightstand for um, six months and it's a fantasy book or a sci-fi book that you want to read, um, go for it. I'm not going to be super nitpicky about this stuff. I just want you reading good stuff. I also wanted to offer you choices because if you're like me, you get overwhelmed by choices. There are too many things to pick from. And then, um, and then I start to freak out. So I wanted to give you uh, a list and then you can jump off of that list. So An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This has been very well reviewed. Um, Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I read Cinder and I think one or two others in this series and I've admitted before I don't do a good job of finishing series because I'm trying to read as much as I possibly can across the surface. Though I recommended this to the dance teacher at my school and then she read the whole series and then her daughters read the whole series. Um, that's kind of like a, a, a cyber retelling. Cinder has uh, mechanical parts in that or Cinderella has mechanical parts. Echo by Pam Munez Ryan from 2015. Every Day by David Levithan from 2012. I know I've mentioned him multiple times before. He's awesome. Red Queen by Victoria Aviard from 2015. I've read this. This has been super popular in my high school library. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert, which I read over the summer. I thought it was fantastic. I think there's already a movie option on it. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Leia and Elias live on the two ends of the so social spectrum, one as a slave, a member of a conquered people, the other as a soldier student training to join the elite legions of the tyrannical forces. Neither is free, and both want freedom. Their lives become intricately entwined as they attempt to escape the chains around their lives and to fight against the martial empire. That's from the bookmark. This was nominated for Yalsa's Best Fiction for Young Adults. Um, a review from MTV blew me away. This book is dark, complex, visit, vivid, and romantic. Expect to be completely transported. There is a, oh, and I have a, included here a New York Times article about a movie and a sequel. So I, I thought I'd remember that correctly. There is a movie coming out. 
Cinder by Marissa Meyer came out in 2012. It is part of a series that plays on fairy tales, which was right up my alley. I love fairy tales, and then I love the sort of um, cross-pollination of the fairy tale and dystopian literature. So uh, it's a fun series, and this would be a great choice. So as plague ravages the overcrowded earth, observed by a ruthless lunar people, Cinder, a gifted mechanic and cyborg, becomes involved with the handsome Prince Kai and must uncover secrets about her past in order to protect the world in this futuristic take on the Cinderella story. And that's from WorldCat. Um, I've included the link to Meyer's website, uh, and there's the first chapter available on YouTube. Here's a little review, quote from a review from Publishers Weekly. It unfolds with the magic of a fairy tale and the breakneck excitement of dystopian fiction. It is part of the Lunar Chronicle series, all based on fairy tales. Scarlet is, of course, Little Red Riding Hood. Cress is Rapunzel, because Rapunzel is the name of an herb that is kind of like watercress. Winter is, of course, about Snow White, and Fairest is the evil queen from Snow White, and that is a prequel that was actually um, recommended to me by several people that Fairest um, was their favorite. All right, another book that is working in uh, classic storytelling is Echo by Pam Muniz Ryan from 2015. Lost in the Black Forest, Otto meets three mysterious sisters, kind of like the fates, and finds himself entwined in a prophecy, a promise, and a harmonica. And decades later, three children, Friedrich in Germany, Mike in Pennsylvania, and Ivy in California, find themselves caught up in the same thread of destiny in their darkest days of the 20th century, struggling to keep their families intact and tied together by the music of the same harmonica. So this had starred reviews in School Library Journal, Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and the Bulletin for the Center of Children's Books. So lots of folks were like, yes, yes, on this one. This is one I have not read. Um, but uh, I'm absolutely intrigued, part of why I included it, and because of the many, many good reviews. So um, go for it, y'all. Every Day by David Levithan from 2012. Every Day a Different Body, Every Day a Different Life, Every Day in Love with the Same Girl. Every morning, A wakes in a different person's body, in a different person's life, learning over the years to never get too attached until he wakes up in the body of Justin and falls in love with Justin's girlfriend, Rhiannon. Um, every day takes the idea of uh, unrequited love or not having what you want to a whole nother level. Uh, so just what a fantastic concept and a really fun read. And then if you like this one, you might be interested in Another Day by Levithan from 2015, which is a companion novel told from Rhiannon's perspective. Red Queen by Victoria Aviard from 2015. This is definitely, I think, some social commentary on, on uh, social injustice in our society as well as this one. Anyway, Mare Barrow's world is divided by blood. Those with common red blood serve the silver-blooded elite, who are gifted with superhuman abilities. Mare is a red, scraping by as a thief in a poor rural vi village until a twist of fate throws her in front of the silver court. Before the king, princes, and all the nobles, she discovers she has an ability all of, all of her own. Uh, this was quite enjoyable and has been very popular, particularly among girls, but I've had some guys read this too. Um, so this has been a big one in my library and, of course, was very well reviewed. My other recommendation is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This came out in, early in 2018. This is kind of a long thing that I pulled off the Mac Macmillan website, but it's just so good. Anyway, all right, so 17-year-old Alice and her mother have spent most of Alice's life on the road, always a step ahead of their uncanny bad luck, biting at their heels. But when Alice's grandmother, the reclusive author of a cult classic book of pitch-dark fairy tales, dies alone on her estate, the Hazelwood, Alice learns how back bad her luck can really get. Her mother is stolen away by a figure who claims to come from the hinterland, the cruel, supernatural world where her grandmother's stories are set. Alice's only lead is the message her mother left behind. 
Stay away from the Hazelwood. All right, y'all, I'm getting super tired, and I think I've recorded this one already. So if I have recorded over this slide twice, just fast forward. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I don't want to leave it out, though, so I'm going to tell you about The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This came out in, actually, January of 2018, so it hasn't been out that long. It's about 17-year-old Alice and her mother. They have traveled their, all of Alice's life that she can remember, and they always have bad luck. When they hear that Alice's grandmother, the reclusive author of a cult classic book of pitch dark fairy tales, has died alone on her estate, the Hazelwood, Alice learns really how bad her luck can get. Her mother is stolen away by a figure who claims to come from the hinterland, the cruel supernatural world where her grandmother's stories are set. Alice's only lead is the message her mother left behind, stay away from the Hazelwood. So, of course, does Alice heed the warning? Well, no, because if she did, then you wouldn't have a story. But um, Alice has great adventures, makes new friends along the way. She is someone who has traveled so much, she has never really made friends. And so when her mother is gone, she needs to learn quickly who she can trust and who she can't. It's uh, Many of our stories in this uh, fantasy selection are based in fairy tales. This one even more so than some of the others. Anyway, they're all great. There's You can't make a wrong choice in the books I've listed. And there's so many other great fantasy books out there. Um, make sure you've got some good reviews if you choose outside of what I've suggested. And if you're looking for other great books, of course, there's an app for that. <laughs> Yalsa's app, the Teen Book Finder. It's available for iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad, and through the iTunes App Store. It's also now available through Android. The Teen Book Finder is distributed by ALA. It was funded through a Dollar General grant. It has lists of recommended books, search by title, subject, author, genre, and award. Find copies of titles in nearby libraries and create lists. This is probably too much for me. I'm already overwhelmed in my own library because I have 15,000 books to choose from. So I do not use this and I don't want anything else to distract me on my phone. However, this might be something that if you are an app user, this could be really cool. Just some reminders, uh, upcoming assignments. You're gonna wanna read chapter six in our textbook for this week and there are a couple articles for this week. Please do post in the required discussion this week about our textbook. It can be from anything from the first six chapters. So if you have not cracked the textbook yet, um, open it up and at least look at chapter one, please, or look at chapter six. Um, you don't have to write about every chapter, just say something about the book, something that you have found in the book that has been useful to you. Your author presentations will be due by midnight on Thursday, September 27th. I'll have additional information and resources that will help with the assignment in next week's lecture. Um, if you're concerned about any other due dates or you need me, you can of course contact me uh, by email. Uh, upcoming author presentations that's due on the 27th. You're gonna read one young adult book by your author, a Margaret A. Edwards Award winner before you create your author presentation. You're gonna read the directions and rubric, which are available under assignments on Blackboard. Please use the recommended resources in your directions and the upcoming lecture on authors. Please do not rely solely on the interwebs for your content. You wanna be using some text resources or some uh, journal-based resources should be a PowerPoint, Google slideshow, or a haiku deck. If you must use a Prezi, okay, but try not to make it too whirly because Prezi's make me dizzy. Um, and I really, I, you don't need to be super fancy with this stuff. This is not a tech course. It's about promoting the, the literature. So don't worry about that. Um, the presentation is one that you would use with a young adult audience. So you're aiming at young people, not at grownups with your author presentation. And this is due by midnight on Thursday, September 27th. Have any questions? Be sure to email. I try to get back to you as quickly as possible. It's taken me um, 
well, sometimes almost a day to get back to some people if it's during the work week as I don't always have access to USC email when I'm at work. Strangely, sometimes it's blocked. So um, be a little patient. We should get your graded materials back to you in a couple of days. So be patient with that. I know you're finishing up your first um, graded assignment and that should be in tonight by midnight. And if you have questions, once again, send me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, I hope you're all doing well. Let me know if you have problems and uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right, bye.